My father was a secondary school geography teacher. And he had a subscription to National Geographic. And we had to read the magazines. That was one of the requirements. And I'm looking through this magazine and I see all these colorful pictures. And it's New Orleans and it's Mardi Gras. And this is as a kid, I'm six or seven years old, and going through this magazine that my dad wanted us to read all the time. And then you fast forward it. Uh, I go through my junior playing days. I'm at the Orange Bowl. I have a setback with a bad car accident. I recover, I get back, and I play in the first tournament, which is at a community college that I had attended. And um, it was a huge event, actually, but this is at a year and a half later, and it's the Vespa Bianchi you know, tennis championships. It's a big event, and um, I ended up winning the tournament. And there's a guy watching this, and he happened to be a basketball player, and uh, he started, you know, uh, congratulating me and telling me, and he started talking, and he mentioned New Orleans. And he had mentioned that he had a friend there, he knew someone, and if you would ever be interested, let me know. And so as we started talking, his name was Bill, and um, so that came back on my radar because I was now looking for a school because I had a medical hardship. And so I had a couple of choices. So I wrote to the coach at the University of New Orleans, Bob Hanley, and he responded. And uh, I told him, and he had re recognized that I'd won a few tournaments. So he flew me in, came to New Orleans, played there number one. His number one recruit was a local kid, Corey Clark. And uh, he was ranked in the South. I came here, it was extremely hot in the summertime. I ended up beating him. He takes me out to dinner that night. Then we go to the French Quarter. Then he offered me a full scholarship. And basically, I knew where I was coming. The first match of the season, so you have to understand the mentality I had. Uh, we had practice from two to five, and then I started practice again for myself. I would always be running on the lakefront. My conditioning was always, uh, in my mind, it had to be more than what someone else did. It never stopped. Um, I had success as a junior, so when I came here, the players that were here at the same time with me were all talking about this new kid, we were going to play South Alabama, the first match, and this kid was a Davis Cup player, and uh, I sat in that van, everything was blocked out, and I'm thinking I'm going to play this guy, and I had thought to myself that um, I'm going to have a challenge. but. When I went out there, played him, and I won that first match 6-2, six 6-love, six I, I think there was such a silence in the van. We had just lost to them, and it was, I think, 6-3 or so, and uh, they just kept on telling me, do you, do, you, do you recognize what you just did? You beat this guy, and it wasn't a close match. Well, he had grown up playing on clay courts, and I grew up playing on hard courts, and it's a two, two different game styles. And so that was a moment, and that propelled me. That one match took me to 21 straight victories. I'm honored, I'm humbled, and the thought that someone would think of, you know, the very first class. And when I think of it, um, I'm grateful, I'm thankful to, it means a lot. It means uh, I'm in a class with some of the, the best athletes and the people who have made a, a difference in athletics at this university. When you look at, you know, the stories of Javon Brooks and you look at um, our Irving and you look at the athletes who are being recognized and you're in the same class as they are. It's, um, I'm honored and I'm, I'm grateful for, for being recognized.